So I thought this week I would talk about how I develop ideas for paintings. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. I think it's just based on what you are most interested in and what you want to depict with your artwork, um, which is a whole rabbit hole into itself of, you know, when you start thinking about what do you want your, your artwork to portray? What do you want to, what do you want to, what do you want to paint? First of all, it's got to be something that you think is going to keep your attention, that you think is going to be interesting, that, that first and foremost that you're excited about, but then also what people uh, might want to hear from you, um, what they might want to see, uh, what they might want to put in their house. So, I mean, that's all valuable things to consider, but today I'm going to talk about how I actually uh, develop an idea and uh, get that from just something that's in my head onto, uh, onto a panel or onto a piece of paper. So I have a whole bunch, I have a big stack of books uh, to talk about because uh, I get a lot of my inspiration for paintings from a lot of different sources. I found that I really like the aesthetic of uh, turn of the century, like turn of the 20th century paintings and photography. So that's going to be a lot of what I look at. I'm going to try to study what they were doing back then, what like the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood was into, what were their influences, what did they want to achieve with their work and how they're going to go about putting that onto canvas or um, a lot of a lot of folks around that time were starting to switch over to photography because that was a new medium. So I look at a lot of like turn of the 20th century photography. So I'm really into uh, wet plate shooting right now. Um, I'm hopefully going to be starting to do some of that soon myself um, so that I can kind of get into that mindset and show that kind of aesthetic in my work. I'll just gonna go through some of these. So first up is I like to read a lot of poetry. When my wife was still actually teaching in a school, which hasn't been for a while because of the lockdown stuff, she's been teaching from home. Uh, but that was part of my daily routine that when she would leave for work, I would get up, I'd get my cup of coffee and I would sit down and I would read poetry for an hour or so. I would just sit and read and see what uh, what stuck out at me. I like, I like the fact that there's a lot of imagery in poetry because there's, and it's clear and it's concise because it's not going to be a whole novel. It's how do you portray an idea and an image in maybe just a couple of stanzas, or maybe a couple of pages. So in a lot of ways, poetry is really similar to painting. And so I like to take from that influence. I like to see how they're using words to convey an idea and how can I take those words and convey that into an image. Uh, so like I've been into Dylan Thomas lately. I was reading um, Christina Rossetti recently uh, she, you know, she's most well known for involvement with the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. Um, and she also, you know, you might know her, her lyric from In the Bleak Midwinter, uh, which was later then put to, put to music. Um, but again, sticking kind of around the time period of the work that I'm interested in and seeing um, seeing kind of the world through their lens, uh, seeing what's going on in their lives, seeing what they're dealing with, seeing what's, uh, what's contemporary and how they're choosing to portray it. Uh, Dylan Thomas is great though. He's obviously, um, the inspiration behind, uh, Bob Dylan changing his, last name from Zimmerman to Dylan. Um, 
he's influenced a lot of songwriters that I really like. And so he's somebody that I've been getting into lately. I look at a lot of photography because of the fact that my work is so photographically based. The start of all of my images come from a photo shoot. Uh, so rather than spending a lot of time doing sketches like some artists do to develop their composition, I'm doing photo shoots and I'm moving objects around and taking, you know, two to 300 pictures in a photo shoot so that I can really start to work through the composition in a really tangible, physical way. Um, so one of the artists that I was looking at a lot during my graduate study was Reinecke Dijkstra. Um, I mean, just from the front cover, you can see the obvious influence that I hadn't actually known about her um, until after I was already doing that, that kind of work. And some of my professors uh, turned me on to her work, um, but she does really great uh, photographic studies of individuals in the same kind of manner that I was. Um, so she was a big influence in what I was doing at the time. Obviously, my my interests have changed in that time, and I've slowly adapted more into a more narrative, uh, a more narrative based work. And so then, obviously, like the things that I look at change. So like camera works. Um, this is a great. Uh, huge book, like super thick, um, with lots and lots of photographs of photogravure. Um, so it's a print process using uh, wet plate uh, glass images, um, like amber types. Um, and then it's then engraved into a copper plate and then printed like a, like a, I don't even really know what, what it's called, like an Italio, I think is what it's called. I'm not up on printing. I'd like to be because of books like this, because it is showing what artists are shooting at the time, that period that I'm interested in. And so then I can take you know, inspiration from like some of these images, like it's a really beautiful composition. So just seeing what some of these artists were working with in their photo compositions might inspire me to later do work that looks similar or, um, you know, there's some, there's some really great images that like obviously inspired by Vermeer. So you can see who their inspirations were and how they're interpreting that style of work. And then that can kind of give me some inspiration of how can I bring this into my time period? How can I bring this into what is relevant to me? Um, so again, like I've got like a bunch of books here on, on like tintypes and daguerreotypes and um, just really focusing in on what they're doing and seeing what I can kind of glean from uh, from what has already been done in art and how can I put my own spin on it. I've, I've been really into the pre-Raphaelites recently. Um, their aesthetic is just really great. It's something that uh, kind of fits with what I like to do. Um, I'm getting more into uh, you know, I went from having almost nothing in the background that is just this atmospheric space to now wanting to kind of fill that background a little bit and add some more, uh, add some depth and add some richness and color and texture um, and explore things that I hadn't done before. And the Pre-Raphaelites did that a lot using textiles and wallpapers and uh, floral backgrounds and um, trying to incorporate stories that were relevant and uh, popular in their time period using uh, using classical stories, using you know myths from from Greek mythology or um, 
middle ages kind of mythology of like ideas of like knights in the round table and all that kind of stuff seeing this kind of work is obviously going to inspire me to to make work in a similar fashion i'm looking at how they're setting up compositions looking at poses that they're putting their models into looking at how they're setting up still lifes if they're working on still lifes of what does their lighting situation look like? What kind of objects are they putting in it? What kind of objects can I put in it that would be more relevant to me? I'm working on a painting right now that was uh, very much inspired by John Everett Millay's uh, The Bridesmaid. It was, it, was a, it was a painting that I thought was really interesting. It has a really great uh, composition when you look at it um from kind of a more critical approach uh it is very much using the concept of like pyramid compositional structures that you see in like da vinci's work with like the mona lisa um but then also utilizing a uh primary color scheme so it's very eye-catching and of course i can't find it there it is and so it's this beautiful portrait, obviously not really uh, in my style because this is very much painterly as, you know, the hair just kind of starts disappearing into a mass that's just kind of nondescript, um, but then utilizing uh, Victorian symbolism uh, of concepts that we don't really think about anymore. So. Uh, it's showing her going through a superstition of putting cake through a wedding ring. Um, and so then it was like, all right, well, what can I do in my image that's going to be a little more relevant to what is going on with our time? Um, what can I take from this image? What can I not put in this image? Um, how can I how can I skew it? And so I took this composition and these ideas with this red haired model uh, with this yellow dress and blue background, like keeping the color scheme, keeping the composition, but then adding my own story to it, adding something else that I thought was interesting. And so I've been utilizing um, more of the pre raphaelite storylines and then mixing it with this into this whole composition that is just a uh, a mishmash of pre-raphaelite ideas and putting my own contemporary spin on it by doing it in a photorealistic way um it's one of the first paintings that i'm really bringing into uh into focus uh bad pun um the the actual depth of field of the camera so there's sections of it that are completely out of focus and then as you move into the frame into the image uh things become more in focus and then gradually go back out of focus again which is something that i hadn't really done before i hadn't um i've used depth of field in portraiture just to kind of roll off the edges of the form to bring the care the the model out of the frame um, but this is the first time that i'm i'm kind of putting my own spin on things of actually showing it in a photorealistic way um, but that was a way that like i went through this process of looking at this image and what did I like about it? What was really catching my eye about it? And looking at it in a really academic way, but then putting my own kind of spin to it of um, what emotionally can I put into this painting that is going to be really interesting to me, but also hopefully really interesting to a viewer. Um, and then the last book that I'll show is, um, a book that I had gotten by an artist named Hendrik Kirstens. He's a photographer who is very much um, taking images that are in the vein of like old Dutch masters uh, paintings, but 
doing it in kind of a quirky way. So Hendrix, uh, Hendrick does does these great uh, these great photos. A lot of them are his daughter, I believe. Um, but let me see. Uh, so like rather than like armor, he's using tin foil rather than um, the normal uh, rough around the neck he'll use like coffee filters or like rather than the normal kind of, um, I guess you'd call it kind of like a bonnet um, using a napkin. Uh, but his work is really interesting. I, I really appreciate the aesthetic of it from a photographic standpoint. And you know, this is all stuff that then I try to bring into my own work. I'm, I'm looking at how he's using, uh, how he's using lighting. Is there rim lighting? Is there just a single key light? Or is he using a fill to help get rid of some shadows? Um, and then that's, then like, I sometimes just take that sort of thing into, into account. So you can see like, there's a whole bunch of different aspects of different art forms that I look at from uh, from poetry to uh, just narrative stories from short stories from um, music like my my painting of the beetle um, was very much inspired by a song I heard and I did more research into it and found out that there's this whole backstory to to this this um, to this kind of like indie rock song that most people are just gonna kind of ignore and just appreciate it for being a cool song, but there's like this whole historical narrative behind it. So I like to I like to try to do that deep dive. I wanna try to find out what inspired the artist that I'm inspired by and see what they were taking from from those inspirations and what they were taking from their pop culture and what was contemporary to them and implementing it into their paintings or what were they concerned with? Was it trying to make something beautiful? Was it trying to make a statement about something political? Was it, um, you know, any of that? So hopefully that gives you an idea of where I come from when I'm making my work. Uh, hopefully that kind of can maybe help you find some new ideas and new directions to look at when you're developing your paintings or, you know, maybe things to think about if you're not a painter and you're just interested in art. You know, if you find an artist that you're interested in, look at what they're looking at. Until next time, I'm Matt Cook.